Well, we're getting ready to drive from Michigan to Florida in three days. And yeah. we're headed to Florida for the summer? <laughs> yeah. So it might sound crazy that we're traveling from Michigan to Florida in just three days. It's not how we normally travel. No, that's not us. And what sounds even crazier is we're going to Florida for the summer. Yeah. But it's for a good reason. Yes. And one of the advantages of living full time in an RV is being able to take it with you when things like this happen. Exactly. We have a family member who has taken very ill and we are headed to Florida to be with family. So that's mm -hmm. one of the most important things about our decision in, in doing this. Yep was for cases like this, when things like this happen, we can just pack up and head there. Unfortunately, it's gonna be heading to Florida in the summertime. Yeah, and unfortunately, when we got the news, we're in Michigan. So yeah. we, gotta, we gotta hurry there. It's an awesome timing because the fuel prices are so great right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, we have never traveled like this. We've never done anything like this. So we wanted to bring you along and see yeah. how it goes. <laughs> Three six-hour travel days, overnight stays. Which three six-hour travel days is like 12 travel days for us. Normally, if we were going this distance, so. it would probably take us five to six weeks to get down to Florida. <laughs> we're going to do it in three days. Um, I'm curious uh, how these parks are because we had to cancel everything yes. that we had planned. We had to book a lot of things last minute. We didn't get a lot of time to do a lot of research. Yeah. So we'll take you along. We'll show you the campgrounds that we're going to be staying at overnights along the way. We will show you some of, we're not going to be exploring the cities, but as we drive no. through, if there's anything scenic, we'll definitely show you. We're going to talk about any kind of uh, hiccups we hit along the way. We'll talk about how much gas money we spent along the way. And um, hopefully it'll go all well. <laughs> and Scout's gonna love it. Oh, my poor baby. <laughs> <laughs> he normally does good on about a three hour travel day. He starts four, getting a little. He's okay. Starting but... to get a little antsy after that. Yeah, he's so, like, we should be parked by now. Yeah, after that four hour mark, which we're gonna do three days in a row, <laughs> uh, we'll see how Scout does too. He might be coming out a lot Yeah. to pacify his, you know, need to be <laughs> out of that cage. <laughs> Well, we got a lot of traveling to do, so we're going to get to it. Get started. <laughs> well, we are at our first fuel stop, and uh, we're just south of Indianapolis. We've been on the road for about three hours now, and uh, yeah, it's not too bad so far. Beautiful day out here. Um, the first fuel stop cost us $97.25. I'm assuming that uh, every stop is going to be about, about like that. But we do have our EFS card, so at the end, when we total everything up, we will take off that and then we'll get uh, our total on gas costs. Um, all of our patrons are hanging out with us in real time, video chatting with us along the, the route. If, uh, if that's something you might be interested in, make sure you check down in the description below and join us on Patreon. You can follow us real time because as you're watching this, we're probably about three or four weeks farther down the road or getting into whatever we're getting into. I don't know how or why anyone travels this way. <laughs> Six hours is too much. Way too much. I mean, it was better than I was preparing it to be. I'm glad you thought it was better. I was, I thought it was worse. Well, it did, it passed faster than I, I thought it was going to. I think because we were on the phone with two different people throughout the day, so that yeah. kind of helps pass the time when you're preoccupied mentally. The bumps on I-64. 64, I mean, the, Every state that has 64 running through it should be ashamed of themselves for not maintaining that road. It's terrible. It's horrible. We, we break stuff every time we go through there. This time it didn't break anything, but it did. We had a picture up here. We had a picture up here, bounced out of there. Hit, it was down here on the ground, but now it's up here. It's all in parts and pieces. Luckily, the, gra the glass, glass didn't, break. didn't break. And it's been up there over a year. That's never moved. Never it's once moved. quake puttied down. Yeah. Well. Yeah. 64 again, nothing for quick play. And, and a lot of the I-64, I had to move over to the passing lane and ride in the passing lane just because it was a little smoother. Yeah. So I was pissing everybody off. Yeah. And <laughs> I was just riding, because I'm like, I'm not tearing my stuff up. Yeah, it was god -off. Riding in the right-hand lane where it's all patchy. Was, you know? So anyway, we're at um, Diamond Caverns RV Resort and Golf Club, which is a thousand trails. Mm -hmm. You actually almost, you go inside the entrance of the Mammoth Cave National Park yeah. to get in here. 
So yeah, we're gonna have to come back to this one at some point. One thing I already don't like about the park though, is we, as you pull up, the check-in office is on one side of the road and the RV park's on the other side of the road. Yeah, so That's we, terrible design. By the time we, we came into the RV park, because I had no idea that that was, by the time we saw the sign, I was already turning in. So we come down here and they're like, hey, did you check in? I'm like, no, no. I didn't check in because I didn't see the sign. Why would you make an RV go on one side of the road, have yeah. to circle through the parking lot, come back up to cross the road? Unacceptable. Sorry. <laughs> it's just unacceptable. Anyway, I'll take you outside and I'll show you our spot for the night. It's a nice spot. Real quick. Well, this is a pretty rare occurrence too, a pull through space at a thousand trails. And it's nice and gravel, it's pretty level. It was easy to get in, it'll be easy to get out tomorrow, which makes it so much easier when you're doing a six hour travel day. I definitely appreciate that, Diamond Caverns RV Park and Golf Resort. And right next to us is a Prevo, but it's a Prevo with a slide. Look at this fancy bus. On the other side, it has a slide out. Most Prevos don't have a slide out. So I thought that was pretty cool. That'd probably cost you an extra hundred grand just to have a slide. But I know the spaces, the spaces aren't too terribly spaced out. They're pretty close together, but hey, one night, not a big deal. So what's your guess? We're gonna play the guessing game on gas. Point A to point B. We've already spent 97.25. So you get a little bit of a head start on your calculation. What's your guess? 580. All right, 580. I got, I got 650. Scout's out. He's, he's glad to be stretching his legs, aren't yes. you, buddy? I've done one lap around the island already. All right, we're headed to town. We're gonna get some food. We're gonna get some fuel. We're gonna come back here. We're gonna chill, chill. and we'll do it all again tomorrow morning. Woohoo! We'll bring you with us. Okay. Well, I normally do this on a day where we ain't got a lot going on, but since we're traveling for the next couple of days for long travel days, and it is the second of the month, I'm doing the financials for the channel and making sure everything's good. And we just got all of our stuff in for the month of uh, May. And it looks like we have $612.66 to donate to veterans for this month to add to the pool for whenever we do our next donation. So I just wanted to pop in here during the video and say thank you so much for all of your support watching us and all of the support on all of our social media platforms so that we can donate this money to veterans. And uh, hopefully we'll have another veteran donation coming up real soon. Well, I would love to tell you that we're on the road again. <laughs> well, we are on the road, but not towing. We got all hooked up, everything ready to go this morning, and we have a soft driver's side tire. It's about half of the PSI that it's supposed to be. And so we're driving to the nearest Firestone because that's where our tires are under warranty. Unfortunately, that's about a half an hour away. Yep. In one direction. Yes. And it's about 20 till 10 right now. We're supposed to be on the road. We got about 20 more minutes before we get to the Firestone, and then however long it takes them to fix us up, if they can fix us up, and then a half hour back to get hooked up so i'm hoping around lunchtime that we get on the road on the road that'd be nice but um man we'll see this is um this is a bummer but hey at least it's drivable uh we're going slow on the way there uh just so that we don't have an issue with the tire so at least we don't have to have it towed a half hour yeah in one direction that would have been very very yeah, expensive or we would have had to go through the whole nut roll of contacting the insurance company roadside assistance all that crap so at least we can drive it there and hopefully we'll get there back hooked up around lunchtime and that'll put us over where our destination is for the day around uh, a little after dinner time yeah um, but at least it's summertime we got plenty of daylight it is gonna stay daylight till like nine so, so. hopefully hopefully uh, we can't roll into that place at dark it's too much construction going on there they told us there's a bunch of construction going on there so uh, if it gets too late, we'll have to stay one more night here and do it all again tomorrow. So hopefully we'll get it done today. Or still drive and find a different place to stay. We could. Yeah. So Makes I don't sense. know. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll let you know. Hey, you can't make this stuff up, man. <laughs> well, we got done at Firestone. It turns out that it was a valve stem issue that leads to the TPMS. There's a separate valve stem that leads to the TPMS to give you a reading. And then so there was a little crack in there. It was letting air out. So there's nothing wrong with the tire. The tire's completely fine. We're good to go on that. And we're pulling out of Firestone. We're like, sweet, we're gonna get on the road. And now we're at the Ram dealership. We're at the Ram dealership because uh, as soon as we pulled out of the uh, driveway at Firestone, we got a message that said we have a DEF system error and that in 150 miles from now, 
our truck will reduce our speed to five miles per hour until we get it fixed. So we had to head straight from the Firestone over to the Ram dealership and now here she sits. They can't even get it in the bay for another couple hours. So it is noon right now and probably gonna be around two or three o'clock before they can even get it in. And I don't know how long it's gonna take them to fix it. And I don't know how much it's gonna cost, but we are still gonna hit the road today. We are still staying on track today. So no matter what time they get out, we are gonna hit the road. And this might be the first time we have ever pulled into a campground in the dark we have never done that before uh, but today i don't think it is avoidable we'll keep you updated